This is Alan Ball. Hi, this is Audrey Fisher. This is Jim Perry. Hi, this is Kristen Bauer. Hi, this is Alexander Skarsgård. This is Nelson Ellis. Hi, this is Johnny Neal. This is Rael Tucker. Hi, this is Lindsay Fulcifer. Hi, this is Ryan Quantum from True Blood. Hello, this is Theo Alexander. Hey, this is Lauren Bowles. Hi, this is David Tishman. This is James Frame, and you're listening to True Blood Radio. This is Liz. This is Mel. Welcome to True-Blood.net Vodcast, episode 129 for Thursday, April 7th. It's been a little more activity this week than last week, so we're going to get right to the news items for you. HBO has finally officially announced the premiere date for season four. True Blood returns to Sunday nights on HBO starting June 26th at 9, 8 central. That's a couple weeks later than what we had expected, but you know, HBO, they got to pull it on us. The Inside True Blood blog explains the reason for the late release. Um, In a quote from Gianna Sobel, she says, I just asked executive producer Greg Feinberg all about it, and he had this to say. I found a fan-made poster yesterday saying the premiere date was June 12th, but the truth is now out. It's not great that you have to wait an additional two weeks, but then it's continuous with no breaks, which will really keep the momentum of of the show going. I know I don't like waiting an extra week between my favorite shows, so it's starting later but ending at the same time. We're really excited. In other words, it is starting two weeks later, but that means there won't be any... Um, you know, in previous seasons, they haven't aired a new episode the Sunday of July 4th and then the Sunday of Labor Day. But mm-hmm. apparently this season they're just going to go straight through. Roll so, on through. Yeah. Roll on, True Blood. June All right. 26. So, <clears throat> don't make any plans. Every Sunday, beginning June 26th, for the next 12 Sundays. Join us at true-blood.net. We'll have a live chat every week during the episode, and then, of course, we'll rehash it on the podcast later in the week. Yeah, and really do join us because we have a ton of fun. Yeah, we do, and you can rewatch it later to catch everything else. That's what we do. Well, when Deshaun Owens heard that about an art contest sponsored by Sorensen VRS Young Artists for Deaf Children, he knew exactly what to submit, an oil portrait of True Blood's Godric. Just 17 at the time, Deshaun painted it after watching Godric's final redemptive days in Season 2. As part of the entry, he sent in an essay, which he shared with us, and you can read his essay at true-blood.net. Um, you can also see his incredible artwork. Uh, it's actually very beautiful, showing Godric with um, actually blue fire, which was um, a spot on. And um, you can also, there's also a link there to the website where you could see um, Deshaun talking about um, why, what inspired him, why Godric inspired him, and what was the inspiration behind this painting. So I got to say, good work, Deshaun. Very well done. Very, very well done. I hope Alan Hyde gets a chance to see that. I do too. I do too, because that's really impressive. Yeah, it's an incredible piece. So Lara Pulver, she's Claudine on True Blood, has been cast in the new season of Spooks for BBC One. Over here in the U.S. it's called MI5. She'll play Aaron Watts, an ambitious spy, in the 10th season of the show. Production on Spooks is just getting underway, and, you know, the the role of Claudine isn't huge, but True Blood's only about two-thirds of the way finished filming for season four. So we're wondering if that means that Claudine is going to be absent for the final third of the season, um, or maybe Lara will fly back to L.A. when she needs to play Claudine, or maybe they're pre-filming her scenes? I don't know. Hard to tell how this is going to impact Claudine's presence on True Blood. Mm-hmm. But congratulations to Lara. That's kind of a big get. Um, Spooks is a very popular show in the UK. She's going to be a very busy girl. Yep. Well, speaking of busy girls, Michelle Forbes has also become extremely busy again. She was True Blood's Marianne and a couple seasons ago. She's back on television with AMC's new series, The Killing, which I believe premiered uh, last night or the night before or th- before that. I can't I remember. Think it was sun- Sunday night? I Sunday? Think. Yeah. Yeah, because it's going to be on Sundays. Er. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Pay attention, Liz. Um, and I guess it was received very, very well. I did not see it myself, but I, I saw on Twitter a lot of people were saying it was really wonderful. Um, Michelle stars as a mother trying to deal with the mysterious disappearance of her daughter Rosie in the murder mystery thriller. TV Squad interviewed Michelle about her new role and how it compares to True Blood. Michelle says, I don't know what, what I was thinking after Durham County. I think these roles choose me more than I choose them. Thankfully, I've, been, I've had 
uh, beautiful roles like Marianne and True Blood, where I can go in and have fun, get away from the heavy, heaviness for a moment. So um, hats off to Michelle. You could catch her in The Killing every Sunday night at 10, 9 Central on AMC. Yeah, congrats to her. And if you don't know what Durham County is, it's a it was a Canadian TV show that also was a really heavy drama. Her her character was, you know, it was depressing. It wasn't dancing around with, you know, pig hearts and stuff. And, pr- like, and pretty <laughs> wedding dresses. Yeah, it's nothing like that. Well, proving yet again that he's one of the good guys, True Blood star Ryan Quanton came to the aid of a bloody injured man who was lying on the street in Los Angeles over the weekend. According to an eyewitness who talked to JustJared.com, there was a bloody guy lying in the middle of the street at Hollywood and Highland, and no one was doing anything. Ryan pulled up, saw the man down, jumped out of his car, and raced over to see if he could help. Then, after calling for help, uh, calling 911, <clears throat> excuse me, Ryan and some other men carried the man to the sidewalk, where he then waited until the paramedics arrived. And the source says there was a crowd gathering, and people recognized Ryan, but he was just focused on making sure this guy was okay. So, a boy, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, way to go. Yeah. Okay, my question is to the eyewitness. Why didn't you call, go and help? I know. What's, it sounds like there was a bunch of people there. I think it was on Friday night, and Hollywood and Highland is, is a really popular um, spot in, in uh, L.A., so there had to have been a lot of people there, so why was no one else helping? Yeah. yeah, amazing, huh? Guy bleeding in the middle of the street, and no one, no one does anything. Yeah, and Ryan actually pulls over his car. He's not even out. You know, he's driving by. Yeah. yeah. Oh, people. Sheesh. Only in L.A. Yeah. Not really. Well, actually, sometimes Chicago, too, but I don't know. <laughs> you don't hear about it as much, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> well, on better news, we have several book reviews coming up that we're really excited about. Um, we're going to be recommending some new releases. And we wanted to remind you, our gorgeous and smart listeners at True Blood Radio, that Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 14-day trial to give you a chance to check out their service. They already have all 10 of the Sookie books available, and Book 11 will be on there. I'm not sure exactly when it will be released uh, in audiobook format, if it's the same day as the novel or not. But they do have all of the current Sookie books. Um, they've got, you know, uh, the Harper Connolly. I believe they have um, the Miss Percy, the first two Miss Percy books. You can get in there and just look around and see what's what, what the new releases are. Maybe Black Dag- uh, Black Brotherhood of the Black Dagger. No, Black Dagger Brotherhood. Yeah. Oh, Lord. It's been a long day. Anyway. Check out the new releases and go to audibletrial.com slash trueblood. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash trueblood for your free audio book. We encourage you to check that out. Pretty exciting. Well, I think that's it for news this week. We're going to roll into some spoilers here. So if you don't want to be spoiled, you don't want to know what's coming up for Season 4, shut us down, turn us off, and we will see you next week. Bye, guys. And if you do want to be spoiled, here's what we got for you. HBO's new teaser for Season 4 is a video clip showing Pam, Tara Marnie, played by Fiona Shaw, and Lafayette in the woods. And Pam is not a happy camper. Mm -mm. Do you like what I did there, woods? Happy camp. (laughs) She doesn't camp. Marnie, Tara, and Lafayette are inside a circle of candles, and they put salt around themselves. Marnie is holding a book and saying that she can't do it without the vampire there. Lafayette is asking her if she could do it by remote, which I thought was funny. (laughs) Can't you cast that spell by remote? Tara is holding a gun loaded with wooden bullets, pointing pointing that at Pam, who is standing outside the circle. Pam's telling Marnie that she had better fix it or she'll bite her head off. Which I thought, again, was funny. Marnie says she can't, and she doesn't know what to do, and then Pam starts forward and goes into the circle and says, Fix my maker. To which Marnie holds up one hand in Pam's face. End scene. Dun, dun, dun. So apparently, Marnie is packing some power. Indeed. And if you watch closely at the beginning, you can see the slate, you know, when they're calling scene. And this is epi- this scene comes in episode four. So Eric is already lost by episode four. Yeah. And Pam is pissed. And Pam Marnie he clearly has done something. Um, it, it sounded to me, did it sound to you like Marnie 
had made a mistake and she was trying to fix it? Yeah, or she wasn't the one that made Eric the way he was and she's trying to undo something somebody else did. That could be it, too. And doesn't know how. Mm -hmm. Or it could be, and somebody speculated on this in the comments on, on this post, it could be since... Um, since we've been told that Mar or some terrible presence is going to enter the scene this season, um, a, a big bad again, and this we have we don't know if this this person is or thing is, and it could very well be something that takes over Marnie, makes her more powerful. Right. Well, Hallow, right? Hallow takes uh, over Marnie. So. Uh, why am maybe, I? Maybe maybe Hallow took over Marnie, cast a spell on Eric, and then left. And then Marnie's like, um, holy crap. <laughs> How did I do that? I don't know what to do. Yeah. Ooh, that yeah, could be interesting. So, a lot of possibilities here. But um, as a little side note, I adored what Pam was wearing. I, I don't know if adored is the right word. It was certainly provocative and very flattering for uh, Kristen's figure. Yes. Yes. I mean, even as girls were like, whoa. <laughs> hot. It was wonderful. I loved it. Can't wait to see more of that thing. Yeah. I wonder but, if that's one of the pieces that Kristen was telling us was we were going to really enjoy. Yeah. I don't know. You know, at and at the um, C2E2 in Chicago, she was talking that she loved her costumes. There were many of them this year that she was really enjoying so we'll see and you know based on what audrey fisher said in the friday five she's having a ton of fun with all the costumes for season four mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah she's so, uh she's really getting to flex her artistic muscles i think yeah so i'm pretty excited anyway i love these little teasers that hbo is doing for us me too and tease they do <laughs> Well, we have the casting call and title for episode 408. This comes from Rosman7 at IMDb. And this episode is called Spellbound, and it was written by Alan Ball himself. So it should be pretty juicy. Um, episode 8, so we're heading into the final arc of the season. Filming begins April 11th in L.A., and for this episode, they're cast casting Virgil, who's described as a harshly handsome 35-year-old Caucasian with a cold and ruthless streak. We'll be seeing him in a flashback to the 1930s, but we don't really, there's, there was no clue whose storyline that would be a part of. In addition, Bill continues to be in a position of authority when he charms a female reporter from the local TV news. She's talking with that troublemaker Maxine Fortenberry when Bill shows up and interrupts the interview, and the reporter is more than willing to give Bill a public forum while, we assume, Maxine fumes in the background. I wonder if he's uh, glamored her this reporter kind of be nice to see bill pull that out huh mm -hmm. because he does it so sexy mm -hmm. also being cast is rita who's simply described as an attractive maternal woman in her 40s so maybe one of maxine's friends not sure there but looks like uh it's gonna be the hottie factor is gonna be up with bill being all authoritative and eric you know book four eric being book four yeah <laughs> I tell. Oh, but I'm where's so Alcide? Huh? Where's Alcide? Speaking of bodies. I know. Yeah. I know. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Wait, one of those teasers has got to be Alcide. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. Listen, HBO, we want an Alcide teaser. Yeah, please. Love me some Alcide. Mm hmm. Well, we know that he's involved with Raul and, you know, this whole Packmaster thing. So, surely, surely there's a tease where he's shirtless that they could throw us. Just saying. <laughs> because we wouldn't mind. No. I mean, he's got to, I don't know, he's got to work out or fight or something without a shirt on. Yeah. That's, that's just makes sense, I think. Well, at some point, he's going to have to transform. Oh, so you're going for the full Monty. Okay. Oh, yeah. This is true blood. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> About time he got his own sock, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A few of them. 
Oh, gosh. Yeah, we're veering into our territory here, so we may as well wrap it up <laughs> oh, all before right. you all start blushing. <laughs> Sorry if we made you blush. <laughs> but if you're listening to spoilers, you're probably not. So. No, probably not. Anyway, it will be a wrap for this week. We want to thank you for joining us. Our show was written and produced by Mel and myself. Music is courtesy of Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. This podcast is copyright chew-blood.net. All rights are reserved. Chew-blood.net is not affiliated with HBO or the cast and crew of True Blood. Be sure to bookmark chew-blood.net for all your latest news, photos, videos, spoilers, and anything else you'd like to throw at us or that you want to hear from us. And we'll see you next week. We also want to thank our editor, Hunter, for doing such a fine job with our podcast. And don't forget that you can subscribe to our iTunes feed if you want to get the audio version of the podcast delivered to you weekly. And as always, don't forget to send in your comments or questions to webmaster at true-blood.net. Take care. Bye.